This is VOA News via remote. I'm Marissa Melton. U.S. President Joe Biden aimed squarely at Vladimir Putin in an impassioned address in Warsaw directed at Ukrainians, Europeans, and the global community. He blamed the Russian president for the month-long siege on Ukraine. He also addressed the Russian people directly. You, the Russian people, are not our enemy. I refuse to believe that you welcome the killing of innocent children and grandparents or that you accept hospitals, schools, maternity wards, and for God's sake, being pummeled with Russian missiles and bombs. But he had harsher words for Putin himself. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Minutes later, however, Biden's administration walked back some of his rhetoric. A senior administration official told reporters the president's point was that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. The official continued he was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change. The Kremlin was dismissive of the president's remarks when asked about them after the speech. Its chief spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, said Russians would decide who their leaders should be. Biden also praised the Ukrainian people who have conscripted every able-bodied adult male to the fight, which recently passed the one-month mark. He spoke to a crowd of nearly a 1,000 people, including Ukrainian and Polish officials, diplomat, diplomats, and ordinary citizens at Warsaw's... For God's sake, this man cannot remain. At Warsaw's royal castle. The speech comes at the very end of a whirlwind diplomatic tour in which Biden met with NATO, European, and G7 leaders in Brussels and then headed to southeastern Poland, where Patriot missiles were prominently parked near a temporary U.S. base within easy range of western Ukraine. VOA News. Top EU diplomat Joseph Borrell said Saturday Iran and world powers were very close to agreement on reviving their 2015 nuclear deal, which would curb Tehran's nuclear program in exchange for lifting tough sanctions. Borrell said in an address to the Doha Forum International Conference that he believes a deal could be reached in a matter of days. Iran wants the removal of the U.S. foreign terrorist organization designation against its elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Tehran has also been seeking guarantees that the United States will not unilaterally withdraw from any agreement. There are also disagreements regarding the extent to which sanctions should be rolled back. Yemen's Houthi group said on Saturday it was suspending missile and drone strikes on Saudi Arabia for three days in a peace initiative it said could be a lasting commitment if the Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen stopped airstrikes and lifted port restrictions. The group also announced a three-day suspension of ground offensive operations in Yemen, including the gas-producing region of Marib, this according to the head of the Houthis' political office. The unilateral initiative came as the war between the Iran-aligned group and the Saudi-led coalition entered its eighth year. The conflict has killed tens of thousands of people, mostly civilians, and left millions facing starvation and disease. The Saudi-led coalition pounded the Houthi-controlled seaports of Hodeida and Salif with airstrikes on Saturday, the day after the group launched broad attacks on Saudi Arabia, including an oil facility in Jeddah. And in the United States, a Friday night shooting at a mall northwest of Chicago has left one person dead. AP correspondent Jennifer King has more. Police in Rosemont, Illinois, say one man is dead and two others were injured, including a teenage girl, after a shooting that had shoppers running for cover near the food court of the fashion outlets of Chicago. A Cook County medical examiner's office identified the man who died as 20-year-old Joel Valdez. Police say a 15-year-old girl who was shot in the right wrist was in stable condition, and a third victim who was wounded ran off. A shopper described hearing automatic gunfire and hiding in the back of a store. Two assailants fled in a red car, and one person was taken into custody as a person of interest. I'm Jennifer. King. Recapping our top story, President Joe Biden aimed squarely at Vladimir Putin in a speech in Warsaw Saturday. The speech was directed at Ukrainians, Europeans, and the global community. It blamed the Russian president for the months-long siege on Ukraine. Biden's administration walked back some of his rhetoric soon after his speech, saying the president is not uh, looking to uh, discuss Putin's power in Russia, just over the region itself.